Moving on to Ferrari, because this is another case where one driver was quite uh, a long way up the road than the other. So Charles Leclerc finishing P4, Sebastian Vettel, I think about 30 seconds or so behind, out of the points again in P12. Um, Harry, is is this again a, a worrying sign for Vettel? Yeah, uh, undoubtedly. Um, I know there's been talk of maybe there's something wrong with his car, like they, they might change his chassis, but I just think it's it's mentally... Uh, I don't think he's checked out. I just don't think he's, he's there in the team and he needs... I don't know who tweeted it, but someone said he desperately needs a control alt reset, a control alt delete reset, um, which I think he does. I think he needs a different environment. And there was a pretty punchy radio message from Seb about the strategy. I think they, they plonked him back out in behind that queue of the two Renaults and McLaren and something at the house or something. Um, and he, he wasn't happy about it. And he said, you've messed up. Well, we don't, I don't think I've ever heard Seb, you know, publicly call out uh, his team like that before. Um, so I just think it, it's a messy divorce they're going through now. He, he's clearly annoyed at the, at, the team for 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 dumping him so unceremonious um, unceremoniously, um, and I just don't think his confidence is there. I mean, we've seen him spin before, but never never like that on you know the first corner where it was just a very rookie rookie mistake from Seb. Um, yeah, it's it's not good enough, and well, it's not confirmed if he's going to Racing Point. I think the rumors are that it's likely he will. And I just pray that that is the reset he needs. It's the like he had in 2014 when he left Red Bull pretty, you know, pretty uh, low and went to Ferrari and was, you know, re- rejuvenated and ended up winning the second race. I just hope that's what's happened happening here and we're not witnessing the slow decline of a, of a great driver. Sam, what did you make of the, the, the gap between the Ferrari drivers out there? Well, I can't say one thing about Albon and Verstappen and not say the other about Vettel and Leclerc. It, it wasn't good enough. Sorry, Vettel spins like an absolute rookie on the first corner of a race. What we always say, you can't win a race on the first on the first corner, on the first lap. It doesn't really, it doesn't often happen. And what's he trying to do? He's in, he's in the midfield. He's stuck his car where it doesn't really belong at that point after his teammate locks up in front of him, runs fully onto the grass, spins it. Every other car lucky to not collect him at that point. And then... It's tough, right? So he's obviously frustrating at that point. And then he comes onto the radio after he's been stuck in traffic and goes, this is your fault. This is... And how rarely how, how rarely do you hear an F1 driver literally blame a team like that for a fault like this? This is your fault. Not, not like, oh, what are we doing? Like, what's the next step? Like, how do we fix this? What's going on? You've done this. You've messed up. And Harry was right in saying it's a messy divorce. This is wrong. But if you don't spin, Seb... You probably don't lose the good 10, 15 seconds that you, you puts you back in that traffic for a start. That won't help. Um, so that that would be great, really. And then, you know, even with like Sainz having an issue in the pit stop, he was held up and also had a slightly issue with Ty. He's still behind him as well. So if you don't spin, you're in front of that group. You're finishing in the points, Seb. You're costing yourself points there by having another rookie spin. And we used to take the mickey a little bit out of, you know, Sebastian Vettel spinning. It became a bit of a joke. You know, he could perform under pressure with wheel-to-wheel racing. And he'd lose the back end a little bit. But now it's becoming like a regular thing. He's facing the wrong way around, like one in every three or four races. He's a four-time world champion. The man, if Michael Schumacher and Lewis Hamilton didn't exist, would be the highest race winner of all time. And look at him. He's becoming a Formula One meme. I, I want Sebastian Vettel to be the best that he can be. The man is lightning quick when he is what he can do, you know. But you're comparing him against... A two-time winner, a rookie essentially. He's only been in the sport for two and a half years, and Charles Leclerc is driving the absolute nuts and bolts of that Ferrari. And yes, I know that a team can set up a car in terms of development that focuses slightly more on one driver than the other. We've seen it with Red Bull, and now we're seeing it with Ferrari. Understandably, they're going to focus more on what Leclerc wants, but I'm shocked to see a 30 to 40 second gap across a race distance with a four-time world champion. Get him to a different team. Get him doing something new. The man needs to have a smile on his face because this is horrible to watch. I'd be shocked if he makes it to the end of the season driving that Ferrari car because it is appalling stuff. I mean, Charles Leclerc, 57 points. Sebastian Vettel, 10 points. I mean, that 
that speaks volumes as to what's been happening this season. And Charles Leclerc in the in the five races we've had has finished in the top four on three occasions, none for Sebastian Vettel to this point. Um, you know, Charles Leclerc today scored more points than Sebastian Vettel has scored all season. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that thirty second gap it's unacceptable. And yeah, the, the spin we've already gone through is 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 not is unbecoming of someone of his stature and of his achievements and um, is, is not something you'd expect from an F2 driver, let alone a four-time world champion in Formula One. And Charles Leclerc's walking away with this. I think for me, the most frustrating thing about this is because that strategy put him in a good place to succeed. We saw that Charles Leclerc was able to go, I can't remember how many laps it was exactly, but Charles Leclerc was able to pull off a one-stop race after starting on the medium tyre. We saw how good Max Verstappen was on the hard tyre starting on that compound. And Sebastian Vettel had the scope to do the same thing. He was on that hard tyre starting in 11th place. Now, I mean, theoretically, I actually think that is a better position than some of the guys who started on medium tyres in about 7th and 8th. I think he had a really good opportunity to go very long on that first stint, which he didn't really um and then you know sh- switch to the medium tires and go to the end um a- again they-, they decided to pit him and yeah I, th- I don't think the team are blameless here because they decided to pit him uh for hard tires basically writing off the one-stop strategy straight away um you know you at least keep that option open even if even if it's not open um to you i mean it might still appear open to others prompting different strategic calls that are that are not the best for the other teams so I, I think this is um, this is a messy divorce. I, it, it's the right phrase to use here because the team are letting Sebastian Vettel down. Sebastian Vettel's letting the team down. Um, neither side is getting what they want here. Uh, and Sebastian Vettel, I mean, it, it, it's embarrassing. It is really embarrassing. And um, I mean, moving on to what to expect from him next, because we have seen those rumours about him going to Racing Point. They've accelerated quite a bit in the last few weeks. Harry, how concerned should Racing Point be that this is not uh, this is not environment related, and this is related purely to his driving skill? Um, I know I I think I don't buy that. I think it is environment related. I just think Seb, I, he's not lost it. He's not forgotten how to drive a car quickly. I mean, it was. You know, it was only a year ago he was getting a pole in Canada. He he won in Singapore. Um, I don't think that he's forgotten that. I just think he, as a driver, his head has got to be in the right place. So I think we saw it at Red Bull in 2014. Um, and he just needs, he he just needs a different environment. Whether Racing Point is the right environment, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm sure, you know, the guys at Racing Point are maybe concerned about this potential new driver. He He's not very quick at the moment, but I just think, yeah, Vettel with a reset will be just a different driver to who he is now. Um, and I guess when, when once you're in that rut of lack of confidence, it's very difficult to drag yourself out of it, no matter how good a driver you are. Um, yeah, I, I I do think that a new environment at Racing Point will, will change Seb. Um, yeah. Sam, do you think that Racing Point have any reason to be concerned here about the decision that they take? Mm, I'm going to go with no, and I'm going to agree with Harry. I'm, you, you don't suddenly lose the ability to be a four-time world champion. I think history has shown to repeat itself, and this is a classic case where when a team was formed around Sebastian Vettel in the, in the world of Red Bull, he thrived. He was on top of the world. That man could do anything with a race car. He could beat the very best. And um, Mark Webber wasn't happy about it, but he was a number two driver. And the focus was never wrong, Mark Webber. Uh, not bad for a, a number two driver, as Crofty said, 8,312 <laughs> times across this race weekend. Accurate. It was pain, so painful. Um, but Vettel absolutely thrived. And then Webber retires, and they bring in Daniel Ricciardo, a young up-and-coming guy who has got pace to burn, and in his first season, beat Sebastian Vettel, because it's not the status quo for Sebi Vett, he's no longer got a race-winning car in terms of taking the championship, and all of a sudden, he's got a youngster who's dragging performance out of that car, and he beats him, and Sebastian Vettel doesn't like it, leaves, goes to Ferrari, where he's then up against 
Kimi Raikkonen, the man that has not had pace to burn, to use the same expression, for what feels like seven to eight years now. You know, he's, he's gone. He's just a, a man who can deliver a consistent race. And again, the team form entirely around Sebastian Vettel. They build the car that he wants. And Kimi's not a complainer, really. Kimi just gets on with the job. And they allow that focus to be around Vettel. And, and Vettel must seem like Ferrari's saviour for a while. And again, you almost had that championship for him until he did fluff it at the end, I think, what, 2018. And then, as Harry just mentioned, he gets a, a pole in Canada. Should possibly have rightly got the win in Canada. Gets the win in Singapore. You know, was possibly going to get the win in Russia before all chaos formed. He's going to do great in Brazil. Um, he, he had talent to burn at the end of last season. He had, had, had brilliance coming out of that car last season. But Leclerc beats him and Ferrari have a change of heart and they see a new focus. They see a new future, a new hope, to quote Star Wars. And, <laughs> um, and then it's gone again. It's gone again for him. It, it, the new youngster has taken kind of the head of the team. He isn't the focus anymore. The car isn't built to his liking 100%. And we see it drop. But this drop is meteoric in comparison to what happened at Red Bull. He was still had that almost like that fight in him. But here it's like I, the Ferrari dream has been crushed for him. And this was his dream in Formula One was to win championships with Ferrari. And it's not going to happen for him. And I think that's hurt him even more in terms of morale. So Leclerc is the focus. Vettel is like the old, you know, the mentor who is so brilliant, but he's just got nothing left to give, to quote Ian Beale. There's a lot of quotes coming out. Wow, this is, this is a mega quote. Uh, heavy explanation. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think that's it. I think at going to Racing Point to be Aston Martin, the focus will be around him. Lance Stroll will learn from Sebastian Vettel. And yes, it will be Lance Stroll who is, team, who is his teammate. Um, they will, he will learn from him. They will build the car around him for a couple of seasons. Vettel will then retire. Lance Stroll will then probably take the helm or they'll get someone else in. Who knows? I can't predict the future. I wish I could. Um, and I reckon it'll be good for him. I don't know if we'll ever see Sebastian Vettel win a race ever again, but I do hope that we see him able to fight competitively where his car's performance actually belongs. Um, I think Racing Point would be foolish to be anything but a little bit concerned. Um, I think they, they rightfully would have concerns at this point because I could see this going both ways. I could very easily see it going the way of he needs to get out of that Ferrari environment and then when he gets into the Racing Point slash Aston Martin environment, it, it works for him and he's able to get back to the old Seb. Again, wouldn't be surprised if it was the other way around. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes to Racing Point, continues to make these errors uh, and suddenly they're looking at Sergio Perez not being in that seat anymore, although I still think there is a chance that it will be Perez and Vettel. Um, They'll look at that seat and think, wow, we had Sergio Perez, who is not error free, but has done a really good job for the team for so long. Um, and, and they're going to look at that and say, you know, if Seb makes, continues to make errors, they're going to regret the decision. And yet maybe, maybe it doesn't end up that. I'm not sure, but I could see both happening. That's the point. And they should have their concerns and they should really think about this decision. I, I stand by. I don't think Vettel could go into that seat and do a better job than Perez. I really don't. And Sebastian Vettel, if this was a one-off, like is it, if 2020 was a complete anomaly, fair enough. The problem is this has been going on for a few years now. You know, 2017 was a pretty good year for Seb. I'll leave that one out. But 2018... He was in the championship fight. He was quick, don't get me wrong, but he made errors. He made a lot of errors that year. 2019, you know, he was, I think, fewer errors in overall, but he was beaten by a rookie teammate. And, and you know, the environment at that point, Vettel still got his future ahead of him at Ferrari. He's got no idea that the contract isn't going to be offered to him. He's got no idea that Leclerc's going to be the future and that there's no space for Vettel whatsoever. At that point in time, coming off a year where they had a had a had a car to win a championship, there's still plenty of optimism there, and he still couldn't beat Charles Leclerc. It's only really this year where the environment's gone sour due to the situation contractually between Vettel and Ferrari. So um, I don't think this is completely down to environment, and I think this is somewhat down to Seb's driving. You know, you, you're right in what you say. You don't forget how to drive overnight. So there is, I think there is some environmental play in that. However, I just don't believe that's 100% of the issue at play here. Whether Sebastian Vettel is regressing very early in his career, it would be extraordinarily early considering what Hamilton is able to do at three years older than him. 
um wh- whether it's whether it is environment i i don't know but it's not happening for him and i think racing point would at least be foolish to not consider keeping perez ahead of him can't wait for vettel to win the championship next year <laughs> I will. I will do something ridiculous if that happens. No, the, the, don't promise that. No, but the fans can name it. The listeners name it. I'll, if it's if it, I mean if it's going to cause me harm, I'm not going to do it. But <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a lot of people out there that would like to cause me harm. Um, but anything silly, I'll do it. All right. So that is confirmed. If Sebastian Vettel does win the championship next year, Sam will be getting Grazie Ragazzi on his arm as a tattoo. Um, (laughs) Thank you for confirming that, Sam. Um, I'm pretty sure all the listeners did hear that. Yep. Yep. They're all saying yes. (laughs) Good stuff. Can't wait. Please don't. Please don't do it, Seb. 